Hi, I'm Chris Hackle from Millennium Technologies. I welcome you back. Today we're going to talk about sizing and maybe getting into uh, ring end gaps on uh, piston rings. An important thing with any cylinder when we're finishing it is to ensure that the size is correct. Uh, if we don't have that correct, we're going to have seized pistons and, and all kinds of bad things. There's a lot of confusion on, on the right way to, to uh, size a bore. So I'm going to show you the way we do it here and explain some of the, the pitfalls of, of what happens when you do it uh, other ways. A size is, is kind of temperature related. That's why we're in our temperature controlled room here that uh, ensures that the, the room is always at 72 degrees. For every uh, uh, degree that the temperature varies, the, uh, the bore can move uh, three tenths. That adds up to be a lot when, um, when things are uh, hotter or colder or you, know, you, can, you can be way off on your sizes. You just make sure that your measuring equipment and your cylinder and everything are all at the same temperature, then you won't have an issue. But if you have everything at different temperatures, like you measure a cold cylinder or a hot cylinder, with room temperature equipment, you can have problems. So that's kind of where we're, uh, uh, we're gonna start is, is the proper way to measure. A dial bore gauge is the, the piece of equipment that's designed to check the size. It, it gives us the size that we, uh, the accuracy and everything that we need. We use sun end gauges here just because they're convenient and easy to use. Mitotoyo, Brown and Sharp, there's a number of other companies that are good at making gauges, uh, but we've liked the sun end just because of the, the gauge setter uh, system that's involved with it. And that's what this is here, is actually a gauge setter. So you go ahead and you dial in your size. We're gonna check some of our, uh, the cylinders for Revolution Performance, our 100 inch bore cylinders, which is three inch nine, thir uh, 370. So that's what I've dialed this into. Uh, you take the dial bore gauge, put it in the in the setter, and I'll turn it so you can see. You get everything uh, dialed up, get it set right to the zero. Theoretically now, this gauge at zero on the gauge is actually the exact size that we want it to be. So then you take your cylinder that you're going to check, and you put it inside the uh, the gauge, rock it back and forth until you get where your uh, your size needs to be. As you can see, this cylinder is eh, about a tenth or two oversized, but that's within our tolerance. Um, we always like to be a little bit bigger instead of a little smaller so we don't have seizing issues, but a tenth is, is very, very minor. When you're actually checking a cylinder, if, if I just did that and walked away, I wouldn't get a real true representation of what the size of the cylinder is. So you need to check it at different levels and in different directions. Not only will that give you the true size of the cylinder, but it'll give you what we call the uh, total envelope or what, what the cylinder is from roundness, straightness, and taper. Again, you can have a cylinder that measures correctly with this gauge if you check it in a row, but it actually could be banana shaped and crooked and all over the place. And if you don't check um, at 90 degree angles, you won't catch that and it'll uh, it'll actually be quite different on the size so it's important to check it in, in multiple spots and uh, in multiple locations once you've, you've checked it and, and everything looks good you know you, you know you've got a, a good product as you can see it's, it's straight within a tent all the way down check the roundness you know it's it's within a tent you know and there's a little spot there that's a tenth and a half but again uh, the more I touch it and the more you check cylinders, the more the temperature will change on it and it will move a couple, you know, like I said, three tenths for a degree. Uh, these gauges are, are very accurate. Sometimes as you use them, they'll, uh, they'll move a little bit. So uh, if you're doing bores over and over again, and to really ensure that you've got proper accuracy the right way, and this one's certified to a 2X, and they'll go to a 3X, but 2x for what we're doing, you know, this is good on a million, um, and, and we don't check anything that, that close. But uh, the uh, gauge rings will, will give you a good size over and over again, and it gives you what that actual bore should be. So it should always read zero um, in this gauge ring. See, this has moved to a tenth, so you always got to readjust it a little bit, and make sure you're right back on the zero. And that's important. Uh, have consistent sizes over and over again. And we've got a number of these gauge rings here to ensure that, that our sizes are always the right size. Because, uh, you know, everyone can measure a little different, but it's important that you're as accurate as possible. 
Other ways that people will use them is they'll set a, a micrometer, uh, which is basically what this is without the, the, the nice fixture to, uh, to hold it, and set that to their size, and then zero the gauge out, and then measure uh, um, where they're at. Or they'll, they'll mic a piston and zero the gauge to that, which will tell them how much clearance they have between piston and cylinder. All of those things are, uh, are good. They'll give you an accurate measurement, but it doesn't give you the true size of what the bore is. When you're checking sizes, it's important to actually know what the size is so that you can relate it. Because if you set it up to that one piston, that when the piston is junk, then you you got to start all over again. Where this way, if you know a size, you're you're good to go. And uh, another check that we've found that works really well is to check ring end gap. Any builder that puts an engine together should be checking ring end, ring end gap every time they assemble a motor. Um, it's important. And some of the tools you use for checking ring end, ring end gap, you know, like a, a good set of uh, feeler gauges, is something that once in a while we hear people say they check bore size with. They'll try and stick a feeler gauge in next to a piston, and that is by no means anywhere near accurate from checking a size. But the ring end gap should get you pretty close. A good way to check ring end gap is to put the ring into the bore. Ring end gap is important because you can have major engine uh, failure if the rings end up budding like this. If they bud in the bore, will scrape the walls and cause problems all over the place. So you always need to check ring end gap. In checking ring end gap, I usually check the top ring first, which is what this is, and then you, you put it in the bore. So you slide it in the bore, use the piston, which is the best thing to get it level, because it's important to be level, and just set it in so you get it to a nice level spot in the bore. As you can see, the it's it, the ring's in the bore. And you're looking for the ring end gap, which is that, that piece there. If it's touching already, you know you gotta grind the, um, or file the end of the rings. Typically you want, a good rule of thumb is uh, four thousandths per every bore or, or inch of bore you have. Um, so on a bore this size, which is around four inches, you want about 16 thumb. But always check your owner's manual or your uh, wherever you're buying the uh, the piston from because they'll give you a spec for it. Uh, a lot of times will tell you what it's supposed to be. So always check it. So then you take your uh, um, 14 thousandths ring or uh, uh, feeler gauge, stick it in the end, and if it fits in, great. You uh, you know you have at least 14 thousandths, and then depending on uh, what you have for your next sizes, which my next uh, um, size up is uh, is 16 thousandths and we check that and that one is very tight so these rings are, are a little tight so I'd have to grind them to get the uh, the 16 thousandths uh, um, feeler gauge in there um, so we're somewhere between 14 and 16 probably around 15 thousandths ring and gap so these rings would have to be sized just a little bit um, and we're all set in with the uh, with the second ring and the uh, oil control ring on a four stroke and, and on a two stroke you would just check the two or, or one ring depending on the bore. Um, so summing everything up, set sizes is as important from uh, um, is as important as anything else you do in assembling a motor from it being clean to everything else because you want to ensure that everything's going to run properly and, and do it now before it's together and you have a problem. Um, so always use good equipment double check the sizes and uh, and always check ring end gap because that will uh, if it's way out of, out of the, the realm of things the bore is probably either really tight or really um, or really big or you've got an issue with your rings which will solve problems down the road so if you've got good ring and gap um, you should be set thanks and we'll see you next time